Um, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for me for um, inviting me to speak at this conference, which has been really insightful. I'm so glad to have been able to attend uh, and hear today's contribution. Um, my name is Lindsay Graham. I'm one of eight uh, uh, of the commissioners uh, on the Poverty and Inequality Commission. And between us, we've got a variety of skills and life experiences um, in our new roles. Um, I want to thank the speakers and all the contributors for, uh, for, for their stories today. And it was about storytelling for me as well. It was one of the workshops that came. Um, and I definitely think I, tomorrow I'm going to need a soft start area at work. <laughs> um, um, so, I, you know, it was just tremendous. And my mind is, is, is blown with everything that, that I heard today. The Poverty and Inequality Commission is a newly established statutory body. It was set up on July the 1st and it replaces the previous non-statutory commission which ran for two years from July 2017. The commission's remit is to provide independent advice to Scottish ministers on reducing poverty and inequality, monitor progress towards achieving Scotland's child poverty reduction targets and milestones, advocate solutions to tackling poverty by establishing our own working <coughs> programme and working with businesses and wider civic society to promote the, the importance of particular issues. The Commission is new and we are currently going through an exciting process of setting up our priorities and developing a work plan for the coming years and I've certainly had lots of food for thought for that today. Um, I'm delighted to be involved in this and hope to have the opportunity to work with many of you um, in tackling poverty and inequality across Scotland. Tackling child poverty is one of the key priorities for Scottish Government uh, and the Scottish Parliament has set ambitious targets to reduce child poverty substantially by 2030. In 2016, I was asked to just reflect a little bit on to me why child poverty um, is so important. Um, I read a report by the chairman of the Bertelsmann Foundation um, called George Drager and he wrote into uh, a report into child poverty in Germany. And he said, children in poverty cannot change their own living circumstances by themselves. That is why the state has a particular responsibility here. To me, this is the same for children living in poverty all over the world. It isn't just the state that has the responsibility to help. We all have a duty to ensure that children, Scotland, uh, chil children, uh, Scotland's children, young people, families and their communities have access to good quality support services in times of need. I've had the privilege already to be working and met some of you on your holiday provision projects and I have to say that's given me a great sense of optimism, as today has. Um, we should, however, never be complacent as there are a vast range of difficult issues to be addressed if we are truly to change the lives of our young citizens. Local areas have a huge important role to play in tackling child poverty and delivering them at local actions at local level. There is much to be done in local partnerships and, uh, and, and to, increase the income, to increase income from employment, reduce household costs and maximise income from social security. I've been struck today by just the huge quality and quantity of work that is going on across Scotland and this is just year one. It's just year one. I really enjoyed listening to the, the, all the speakers and presentations today. Councillor Kelly spoke about investment in capacity. Our workforce who are going to be delivering this are our greatest asset. Our people are, are what make change happen. So we have to be mindful of the workforce that they have um, the resources to deliver on your plans. Um, the mention of digital inclusion, involvement of the business sector. I love Jackie's phrase, when people feel connected, they feel empowered. That's brilliant, brilliant. Um, the other thing is about the, the local partnerships and your plans. I wrote 18 pages of notes. I got so excited at one point, I picked my book up upside down, so I'm going to have a real fun tomorrow <laughs> and trying to tell everybody about that. Um, so I just want to touch on the scrutiny of local reports. The Cabinet Secretary of Communities and Local Government has asked us to scrutinise the local child poverty action reports. We are delighted to take this on. It's our first main task as a commission and a real privilege to get into the detail of all the work that is going on in the local areas. Um, the Cabinet Secretary highlighted a, uh, some areas that she's particularly interested in us uh, uh, looking at. The partnership working, much of which I've heard today, which is really inspiring. There is, uh, is there good evidence in the reports of collaboration and delivering actions in partnerships? 
the involvement of people with lived experience and uh, our people who are ha have experienced poverty being involved in the development and the delivery of plans. Finally, looking at, to identify good practice that can be shared, and I've certainly heard some of that today, um, some very interesting emerging practice uh, around tackling child poverty. In addition to these, we are also looking for an understanding of the drivers of poverty and how evidence is used in planning, prioritisation and evaluation. I was really interested in the evaluation workshop um, and the power of stories. I'm interested in the qualitative data as much as I am um, the quantitative data. I think stories are very powerful when you're trying to shift uh, society. Um, and I'm particularly interested in evaluation processes and what difference can really be demonstrated what difference are we making? Why are we doing what we're doing um, in our communities? We've randomly selected 10 reports to look at. We won't be naming these. This exercise isn't about scrutinizing individual reports and picking up on every tiny point. It's about providing feedback that will be helpful to everyone. We're also interested in, in what we've heard today, the work that's been done by national partners. Partner groups will feed into the scrutiny. I really enjoyed hearing from Hannah and Kerry about a huge range of work already underway, uh, some good examples of um, increasing family income, uh, the work of the cost of the school day, free school meals, um, particularly like the living wage city stuff as well. A few of the phrases of the day that, 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 that stuck out for me, apart from the Shetland accent, wasn't that just lovely? <laughs> I could have listened to that all day, it's kind of melodical. Um, expertise within this room. That's what there is, there's great expertise within this room. Um, and we need to multiply that in Scotland, we need to multiply that expertise. Um, transport Action Learning Set, I'm, I'm kind of into that, I think I'd like to know more about that. Uh, living Wage Cities, I love that. A Change Fund, Looking Beyond Data, I like that as well, Looking Beyond the Data. And Shetland's Burns, I was very struck by Shetland's Burns as well. Of course we understand that this is the first year of producing these re reports and it's not an easy task. We intend for our scrutiny to be supportive and constructive, but it will also challenge you to think about how you can improve aspects of your action plans and how these are reported. The scrutiny report will be published towards the end of the year in time to feed into next year's reporting cycle. It's important that we get this right. So if you've got a new project or programme that you'd like us to know about, please do get in touch with us. Um, your plans and actions are going to be crucial to ensure that we improve the lives of those living in poverty. Finally, when I think about Scotland's Child Poverty Delivery Plan and its title, Every Child, Every Chance, it reminds me of a saying by C.S. Lewis. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start from where you are and change the ending. And I truly believe that Scotland is well placed to change the ending. Thank you. Thank you.